This is going to be over how your floats themselves operate, what they do, what their function is. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, your system has a pump down in the hole, and then it's got these three floats in the line right here. This first float right here is what I call the timer float. And I like to think of this just as simply as a stoplight. So green, yellow, red. Typically when I wire these up, um, I put a, some green electric tape around this, uh, yellow electric tape around this, and red electric tape around this. You don't want to get confused which float is where because it's wired to the box to function a certain way. So if you go to repair this yourself and you take these loose, you better mark each one of these green, yellow, red. So this float is attached to the timer inside of the box. So this timer right here, there'll be, there'll be some tabs that are pushed out in one zone that it is anywhere from two to six hours in duration right here. There'll be a whole series of tabs pushed out and the rest are in. That's telling us the zone that as long as this float is engaged, if it's down here, it's not engaged. The float needs to be about three quarters of the way up and then it, it's engaged, meaning it's sending a signal to the box to say, I've got enough fluid in here that we can operate, that we can pump down the tank. Fluid would be down here, lower, you'll kind of see, sometimes it'll be, it'll turn off and it'll be semi upright, like a, a quarter float, you know, and then sometimes you'll look in there and it'll be a half, and then it'll be like this, and then when it's, this will be floating, and this one you might not even be able to see under the water, and this next one will be part of the way up. Okay, so when these tabs are pushed out, that is telling this float is attached to these tabs is the best I know to tell you. It's the best way for me to explain it to make it the most sense. When this timer gets inside of that zone and there's a little little arrow right here, if you go watch the if you go watch the how to set your timer video, it explains that this is the marker for the time, but once it hits this tab as it rotates around, it'll make a little pop sound. And now it's inside of that zone. So if you want to see if this is working, if you want to know if this float's working, you can take a rake or something that you can grab a hold of this float and gently pull up on it. But you need to make sure that you're in, you're in the zone right here where the tabs are pushed out, that this marker is pointing in that or it won't kick on. If you just lift this up and you're outside of these tabs and this is just in a regular time zone and you lift this up, it's not gonna do anything because this only operates when it's inside of the zone where the tabs are pushed out. If that is the case, and you wanna test this float, you still need to get this inside of that zone, and this needs to, if this is already floating, great, but if you wanna test this one and this one at the same time, but there's not enough fluid in the system, both of these need to be engaged at the same time. Now, if this one's completely burned up, there's a 50-50 chance this will work just fine. But I have found through trial and error and no rhyme or reason, and I don't quite understand why this will be burned up, but somehow still be making a connection enough that it's telling it that it's connected, but it's not working. These are sealed or supposed to be sealed, uh, meaning I don't know how long these or how these innards are put together. And I don't really care. I just know how and what I've run into. And what I mean by that is if you lift if you lift this up because you think this is not working and it doesn't engage, lift your timer float up and your secondary float, because that's what this float is, is your secondary float. Lift them both up and it should engage the pump. This float, this very top float, is nothing more than the alarm float. That's all it does is it, it doesn't do anything more then just turn the alarm on. It doesn't make the pump come on. It doesn't have any other function other than when these two have failed, either they, both these floats have failed or the pump itself is completely dead, your system will fill up. This will engage because the water, that means the water is all the way up to here and it's floating. So this whole thing is full and it's engaging this. And that's when you need to break out your emergency kit of your own sump pump that you have in the garage in that box with the hose and the extension cord. You need to drop that thing down in there and pump this system back down 
and everything can keep carrying on in the house. So simply put, this is your timer float. It is attached to this timer. When you do on Sunday, when mama does 37 loads of laundry, which she shouldn't be, but if she does do a lot of water or you've got a 4th of July party where there's 75 people at your house washing their hands, going to the bathroom and you have excess use and then she's still doing laundry and all that's going on and maybe you have a pool that's got a shower and you have people rinse off like the public pool and all that water's going into your system. Well, this is already floating and then this one starts to float because you're getting a whole lot more water usage than normal. What'll happen is, and this same reason it kicks on laundry, and when you do a whole bunch of loads, it fills the system up beyond its normal daily operating capacity. It means you're using a lot more water than the system is really supposed to be using on a regular basis or throughout a 24 hour period. Once this float engages, this one will be underwater, this float will engage, it'll pump itself back down till this float disengages. Meaning when this float goes down, it will stop pumping and it will leave this one floated, floated up. Cause this is just attached to the timer. This only works. This just turns the pump, pump off and on to keep it in working order. Meaning it keeps it from getting to the alarm float. That's, that's the goal of this float. Excess water usage or this float has burned up. This float's not working like it's supposed to. So you just see your sprinkler spraying at all kinds of random time. You might not see it spray for a day and a half and then at 12.30 in the afternoon it just sprays but you haven't been running a bunch of laundry. You need to go check and make sure your timer is set correctly and then if not, there's probably it's probably time to replace this bottom float is probably what's going on. But that is how this operates. This is your timer float. This is this is what I call your uh, uh-oh, where excess water float or uh-oh, our bottom float stopped working. So it just, it just operates in this zone, okay? And then this is just an alarm float. It does not make the pump come on. It does not do anything other than make the light and the alarm sound to tell you that there's a problem. This is telling you the tank is, this, the last pump tank is completely full this is your warning that it's going to start backing up into the house if you don't deal with this issue pretty quick. That's what this one does. So I hope that helps you clarify and better understand exactly what each one of these floats does.